What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, uh, and this is continuing my deep dive into Jethro Tull's live albums. Uh, I'm on number seven, uh, Live at Montreux 2003. Um, I did have to skip Living with the Past because I could not find it anywhere, and then I posted a video saying that I couldn't find it, and it popped up on YouTube the next day. Uh, so Living with the Past is coming. Uh, we'll backtrack, and then we'll continue on. Uh, but this is... Uh, only one I'd ever heard was uh, Bursting Out. Um, and so now I'm going down the rabbit hole, um, listening to their other live albums. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this one, then I will rank it among the other six that I've done so far. Um, so this is a complete show from the Montreux Jazz Festival in 2003. It was released in 2007. Um, My major note on here that I wrote after listening to this is it needs more heavy prog. Um, there's a number of like sort of light, airy, slightly sort of folky instrumentals on here. Um, in the 80s, Anderson ruined his voice, went out on tour. I think he was told not to, but was committed to committed to being a, a great front man. Ruined his voice. And so it seems like that's probably a lot of the reason there's a lot more instrumentals. Um, it's got some, some good points throughout the show, but really a lot of the highlights from this are kind of the same highlights from things they previously released. Um, so there's that duplication aspect and some of the newer songs don't hold up as well. But uh, I don't know. Uh, there's also a video on this. Um, this was a DVD that was released. Um, I was able to watch the DVD um, on YouTube um, or at least watch the video of it on YouTube, which was pretty entertaining. It was fun to watch. Um, and I think maybe if I'd been there in person, I might have enjoyed the one-time live experience of these you know, there's like a Martin Barr solo song. There's an Ian Anderson solo song. There's um, uh, a song from their Christmas album, upcoming Christmas album. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure how I feel about this so much. Uh, 19 songs, at least on the CD, uh, opens up with Someday the Sun Won't Shine For You off their first album. Really weird to hear a Jethro Tull live set that opens up with harmonica. I mean, they're a flute band. Um, and so it's got this weird, really weird bluesy rock vibe that's representative of their first couple albums, but also not representative of who they are for the rest of this show. So while I I like the opening track and what they're trying to do, especially going back to like literally their first album, Their Roots, it is a weird, it, it, it sets you up for expectations that maybe don't pan out for the rest of the show. Um, the next song is Life is a Long Song, and I'm not a big fan of this, this pairing, maybe because I want a heavier Jethro Tull. Um, and so Life is a Long Song, is it sounds great. A lot of little eyebrows all over the place. The band sounds good, but it's an acoustic song, right? It's, it's, it's kind of a little light. It's not heavy. And I think I want more, I want more heavy Martin Barr action. Um, so we get a Life is a Long Song, we get a beret, uh, which has this nice little like classical-esque intro kind of paying tribute to the you know the original version that they've they've covered um very playful energy in this um i don't know if the playfulness next necessarily improves upon the studio version which is darn near perfect um but they're trying there's a little bit of energy in this it's kind of fun a little playful version of beret um with you there to help me um i'm always here for this um Ian's voice, uh, it's definitely not the same as it is on like the original version or any earlier versions of this. Um, but it's nice to hear this song. Um, you know, it's got good energy. It's it's a little bit heavier. That first drop after they do the dun 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 and they go dun 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 dun, they come in, come in hard is always pretty cool. Um, then we get two instrumentals back to back, something called Pavane, P-A-V-A-N-A, -A, Pavane, Pavane. Um, this is an instrumental off their Christmas album. Uh, it sounds like an acoustic, flute-led type holiday-esque song. Um, some cool changes in there, but it definitely a very seasonal vibe that, I don't know, kind of weird. 
Um, then we get Empty Cafe, which is a solo instrumental from a Martin Barr album. Um, this has sort of an upbeat toll sound to it. Um, little acoustic number, we get some flute action. Um, not horrible, but I don't know. Not what I want out of this. Uh, then we get, I think, the highlight of the first disc uh, is we get a hunting girl off Songs from the Wood. Um, great song choice. It's big. It's full of energy. Um, the drumming is absolutely fantastic. Like, I want more of this. Like, even if it's more recent stuff as we get on like the second disc, just give me more of a bigger, heavier, non-acoustic sound. I think... If, if anything about this show, the, the scales are tipped unfairly toward the acoustic light stuff and not toward the heavy stuff and maybe maybe a little more balance. Um, we get a song called Urology, as in Europeology and not the study of urology with a U. Um, this is a solo Ian thing. It was influenced by his travels around Europe. Um, it's uh, it, He announces something about like, don't try to sing or clap to it because it's in like nine, eight and seven, eight. So it's a weird song. Um, Jaunty instrumental, flute led, kind of like some of the other instrumentals on here. Um, we get dot com uh, on the album. I think they were touring on at this time. Um, okay, live. Um, okay, song. Um, we get a, like a, a female vocalist, a guest female vocalist on here. Um, we get God rest you married gentlemen. Uh, great song, but there's just too much of this vibe so far in the show. Um, I actually almost wish they buried it in Beret as they traditionally did, but I think it's on their Christmas album, so that's why they're doing it separately. Um, and then the first disc closes out with a Fat Man. And I don't think I would have, I mean, I guess I would have figured it out because Anderson can't sing and play the flute at the same time, but Barr's playing the flute. It was pretty cool. Uh, Fat Man sounds pretty good. They do a good job of like recreating the vibe from the studio album. Um, interesting first disc. I think the highlight by far is Hunting Girl. Fat Man's a nice choice. Just too much of a jaunty instrumental acoustic vibe for to really sink your teeth into too much meaty stuff. Um, side two opens up with Living in the Past. We get uh, the vocal version. It's not an instrumental, but it's still got that sort of modern, leaner, more metal, in quotes, attack to it. Uh, a much needed burst of energy right here. There's almost some electricity in the air. Like everybody's excited to like get down and get a little dirty. Um, nice aggressive version. It ends almost really short little brief rest and immediately they go into nothing is easy, which also just sounds great. High energy, they're really bringing it. You can tell they like kind of letting loose for a little while. Uh, awesome one, two punch to open up disc two. Um, we get Beside Myself off Roots and Branches. Um, some nice tasty bar sort of guitar licks throughout this. Um, okay song. Um, yeah. Uh, then we get a My God, which just sounds great. Uh, anytime that drop, that first drop when the band comes in, it's always fantastic. Uh, like hearing My God, a uh, good choice. Um, and then after My God, we get a Budapest. Um, I, it feels like this closes the main set. I'm not, act, no, I don't think it does. It's like, then we get, we have two more songs after this, but it definitely feels like uh, some sort of peak, especially when you know what the next couple songs are. But it's a nice kind of set ending, though it's not the ending, but coming at the end of a set type song. Um, it emerges sort of like the energy coming out of uh, My God is Perfect. Um, not, it's... It's a good song, and I think it's better live than maybe on the album. And it, it kind of just works really well here. If they're going to drop a new song, if they're going to like not reach back into the 70s, but try to be a little more up-to-date and represent all their albums, Budapest is, a, is some good, it's a good choice to uh, follow in my God. Uh, then we get New Jig, which is a jaunty instrumental jig, and then that goes into Aqualung. Um, and always the best part about Aqualung, I think, is the, the extra bars that Bar gets, the extra, the extra bar bars that he gets in his guitar solo. Um, that's always pretty good just to see what he does with that little that little bit of freedom that he gets in his guitar solo. And then finally we get a locomotive um, in which we get a bunch of songs tacked on at the end, like sort of traditional type instrumental stuff to just close out the show. Um, bar as always sounds good, uh, nice little extended intro. Uh, 
little bit more beef to the sound. It's an okay version. It's not the best, not as heavy hitting as like that 70s, that bursting in out version. Um, but you know, a typical closer, locomotive breath coming at the end, uh, not bad. But yeah, that's it. I can't say anything really, really blew me away with this performance. Um, I think Hunting Girl probably stands out as the peak along with like living in the past is, and nothing is easy. I think they're much, much needed sort of flexing of their electronic muscular muscles. And I think we could have used a little more of that. I don't think Aqualung and Locomotive Breath count because they're just so almost required numbers at this time. I almost think it'd be much more interesting. Like if they felt that they had to play those songs, play them early in the set, get them out of the way, like leave room for surprises. But when we reach towards the end and they haven't been played, you just kind of know they're coming. So there's something at this point in my experience, a little anticlimactic about that. But but yeah, I don't know. Uh, those are my thoughts. I'm kind of meh on this. Um, where would I rank this among the others? I do have it at number four. I think I'm more, inter I would go back and revisit this more before Aqualung Live. This is because I think Aqualung Live fails by not sounding as sick as the album, like Cross-Eyed Mary, that studio version is ridiculous. Um, and then a little light music and in concert kind of suffer from some of the same stuff that uh, this one suffers from. It's just not enough of that really, really muscular proggy action, that electric action, electronic, electric, not electronic, that sort of, you know, that type vibe. So yeah, that's it. Those are my thoughts on this. Um, I'm gonna go back and cover Living With The Past, which I think was a, a tour in which they were playing a whole bunch of stuff. So I haven't, I, I glanced at the set list. I think it seems a little more interesting than this. And then we have a couple, like I think we go back in time even more for a couple more shows. So excited about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's what I got. Those are my thoughts on this album. Let me know your thoughts. If I'm missing anything, blah, blah, blah. You know how comments work. Subscribe, like, share, comment. And... Go listen to Bursting Out if you haven't, because that is one of the best live albums of the 70s. Um, and this is on video, which I think was fun to watch. But yeah, okay, that's it. I'm rambling. Peace. Talk to you later.